In the culmination of the embark net zero free crash course organized by MS of EFLU Hyderabad, the comprehensive curriculum has traversed diverse subjects under the tutelage of esteemed faculty members. Today, Mr. Shabab, our senior research fellow at EFL University, is leading a discussion on higher education systems. I extend a cordial welcome to the entire audience and especially our faculty member, Mr. Shabab. So please. Uh, no, no, you are not audible, no. Uh, no, still not audible. Uh, Shabab sir, I think uh, there is some technical issue. Uh, you could uh, just leave a session and come back in so that we will fix everything. Hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, am I audible now? No? Yes, yes, you are. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, uh, we can just uh, start within two three minutes. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hello, is it audible? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, okay, we can start now. So, uh, good evening, everyone. And we are uh, going to uh, the final chapter, Unit 10, high, the higher education system. As you know, uh, we are the ninth day of our UTC next year. So, uh, 
I think first of all, I appreciate uh, the team Embark and team MSF Iflo for conducting a crash course on UGC Net and JRF. I hope some uh, of you uh, people uh, will be qualifying the JRF and Net exam in the uh, upcoming uh, Net exam. I think uh, tomorrow uh, the Net exam will be started. I think the uh, students, including in the uh, English departments. Uh, they have exam tomorrow so uh, first of all uh, i wish all the very best to the uh, to the all people who are in the uh, ugc net uh, preparation uh, the course then you no know, wasting the time i can just uh, we, uh, we can go to the uh, slides the introduction i will just introduce the syllabus if there is any uh, technical issues if there is there any uh, problem in hearing or seeing the presentation, you can let me know. You just uh, or, or on your mic and you can tell uh, the, if, the, if there is any issue. Okay. So we are just starting. I think uh, we have very short. Uh, we have very short. So uh, I will be uh, moving very fast because uh, some of you have the UGC net exam tomorrow. Is, then some of you have. Uh, uh, some of you or uh, some of you the more time to uh, revise all of these things the uh, paper one and paper two so uh, i will uh, move uh, i will take the uh, today's session as soon as fast but i will i will assure you uh, that i will uh, uh, give the slides i, I pack the uh, my slide uh, with all of the portions all of the important portions then you can cover so i you, while I class, uh, when I I will be class uh, taking classes, the I will skip some of the questions that that is uh, comparatively less important. So if there are any doubt or if there are any clarity uh, needed, you can ask directly. Okay, so I will just introduce. I'm just going to introduce the syllabus. Uh, in higher education system, we have the uh, we have uh, some points. We have to uh, note that. Institutions of Higher Learning and Education in the ancient India. So, if you are studying about uh, study about the uh, higher education system, we have to start from the first. We have to start from the ancient India. We have to uh, cover some history uh, about some ancient universities and educational institutions. So, uh, we have to cover that. The evolution of higher learning and research in the post-independence India. So, we have to. Uh, uh, there is a uh, we can see an evolu uh, evolution uh, from the ancient India to the modern higher education system. There is a uh, series of the uh, topics. There is a series of some points. So uh, we can we have to cover all of these things. Then Oriental, conventional, and non-conventional. Uh, learning programs in India, professional and skill-based education. Uh, value education and environmental education, policy, governance and administration, constitution of India. Why the policy, governance and administration uh, and the uh, constitution of India will be included in the higher education system? Uh, that is a, uh, obviously uh, we can ask the question because uh, actually we named the portion, uh, some portion from the public administration or uh, from uh, GKI can call them GK. Uh, basically, uh, these are the topics from uh, public policy uh, and governance. So, basically, we can uh, say that we will have to learn the basics of uh, the evolution of the higher education system of India and the public policy and governance, or the public about the public basic things about the public administration. So, uh, this uh, this is the I view. Uh, uh, this is a uh, basic view of the syllabus. Then we can just directly uh, go to the uh, paper and uh, higher education system. The portions. Okay. So, uh, introducing myself, I think you remember me. Uh, I, uh, I'm Shabnam Karunim, uh, in Apple University. I think uh, you remember me the, uh, that. I taught you the higher education development associate uh, portion, the environmental. So today, we are just going to uh, learn a higher education system and public uh, governance. Okay, 
So the first point is the uh, uh, first the in the primary slides we will go uh, go through some institutions, some some ancient ancient institutions that was in India in uh, took a, a very university that in, in English Takshila University called then Takshila University uh, was founded in uh, 16 BC. Um, 16 BC. I think uh, the history says that Takshila is has been described as the first university uh, university established across the globe. If the uh, question will be asked in this manner, which is the first uh, university in the globe in the uh, the world? We can just uh, answer Tashila University. There is not much evidence, but we can say we can. Uh, uh, some uh, some of the scholars uh, had a conclusion with this uh, thing. Tashila University is the uh, is dis uh, described as the first university established across the globe. So uh, Tashila was the capital of Ganthar Kingdom. There were so many Janapadas. There were so many. Uh, uh, kingdoms in India, ancient India, Nandhara, Kamboja, and all. So, Tashila University was in the kingdom of Gandhara. Gandhara. Tashila was an important center in Brahmanical education. There are so many types. Uh, there were uh, so many types of education. As you know, uh, in ancient India, the Brahmanical education system was very uh, 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 took the uh, important roles. And uh, the Vedic education system was uh, basically the Brahmanical education system uh, was there in India. Uh, the Takshila University was the key center, was the main center of the uh, Brahmanical education uh, system in India and ancient India. So uh, Takshila University was famous for medical studies, Panini, Kautilya, Chara, you know, who is Charaka. The guy is called as the uh, father of uh, Indian medicine. Saraka uh, is called as Saraka is called as uh, the father of Indian medical sciences. Then who is Panini? You know about Panini. Panini is the I think uh, Panini is the father of grammar, the uh, grammatical sciences. Thought. Then Kautilya is uh, Kautilya uh, is is a very non scholar. Uh, in the period of the uh, Chandragupta Maurya, so we have we don't have to uh, move very deeply. We can just call. Uh, we can just move to uh, the next slide. So uh, we are uh, going to the next university, Nalanda University. You know about the Nalanda University. Uh, in modern India, in contemporary period, we call Nalanda University as Nalanda Open University. That is a central university. But Nalanda University in Bihar was established uh, in uh, 427 CE, uh, I think BC. It has been known as one of the first great, uh, first great universities in uh, history. So in the history of the India and the world also. It is progressed a lot uh, during Gupta dynasty. There were so many dynasty in, uh, dynasties in India. So in Gupta dynasty, Nalanda University established and uh, did a very good role in higher education system in ancient India. The University of Nalanda was famous for its faculty of logic. Yukti Shastra, we can call Yukti Shastra, that is logic. So. Uh, the university was very famous for the logic. There was somewhat uh, tough admission criteria. There were, uh, we have uh, now what is in uh, the what is the uh, admission criteria in uh, modern universities, the entrance exam, interview, and all. But in Nalanda University, in ancient Nalanda University, the minimum age limit was 20 years for admission into the university. Many facilities were being offered free of cost. The important thing is Nalanda University was offering the a very a very much uh, facilities in free of cost. Eight big halls named as Samgraharama and 300 study chambers have been the main attraction. So you know uh, that Nalanda University is very uh, large in the infrastructure. It was very large in the infrastructure and uh, also in the uh, 
in the area of improving uh, the higher education in india so nalanda university uh, is uh, was situated in the bihar the state of bihar so in nalanda university they have a new form of nalanda university now that's a central university that is nalanda open university okay so uh, we have to just remember these things then i will just go to walabi walabi is the uh, cap walabi was the capital of vijayanagara samrajya so hua uh, hua sang i uh, it sing had found walabi in the western side of india as glorious as nalanda so we already uh, told that i already said that uh, nalanda was nalanda university was a very glorious institute very uh, glamour institute in the sense of the uh, making knowledge and spreading knowledge <laughs> so walabi was also a uh, very uh, great uh, very great university it was not just a center of religious education as of other secular subjects such as artha shastra what is artha shastra economics neeti shastra law and chikitsa shastra medicine were also taught here so uh, walabi was a center of artha uh, economics medical science and other subjects like med uh, law it was mainly the center for hinayana form of buddhism there are uh, two type mainly two types of uh, buddhism hinayana and mahayana so walabi was the center for the hinayana form so uh, walabi was spending in good financial position till 755 but some portion were destroyed due to arab invasion it is still continued till 12th century so uh, walabi uh, the institution uh, continued till 12th history uh, 12th century so we have i'm just uh, going fast vikramashila there are three other institutions vikramashila mithila and ujjain so vikramashila it was set up and uh, established by the emperor dharma dharampala of pala dynasty pala dynasty in the 8th century of northern magadha i already uh, said that there were so many janapadas there were there were so many kingdoms like kandhara kamboja magadha so vikramashila uh, was in the area of northern market currently that is situated in the bihar the university was famous for religious teachings and here 108 scholars were appointed as the in charge of areas of the various temples so vikramashila was uh, basically was a center for religious sciences uh, religious studies so uh, the uh, university uh, scholars were appointed in the uh, various temples it attracted a larger number of scholars from tibet so there were so many scholars coming from tibet to study uh, the uh, religious studies and all in vikram uh, to vikramashila so the next one is mithila mithila was is also uh, from uh, in bihar i guess in the upanishadic age there was a call uh, there are so many calls the time periods so upanishadic age Mithila became a prominent seat of Brahminical education. We are all we are, uh, talking about the Brahminical education system. It was named as Videha. Famous poet Vidyapati. Vidyapati, we can uh, we, we call Vidyapati as Maithili Kogil. Maithili is the language of Mithila. Uh, he is a, a very uh, famous poet in Hindi uh, who had a writ uh, written in Hindi and Jayadev. Jayadev, you know, Gida Govindam. Gida Govindam is written by Jayadev Kavi. So, Vidyapadi and uh, Jayadev Kavi from the, uh, was from Mithila. So, uh, so many uh, poets of uh, po uh, Sanskrit were also from Mithila. Ujjain, where is Ujjain? I think, and now in modern India, I think Ujjain is in Madhya Pradesh state. It was famous for its secular learning, including mathematics and astronomy. So, um, Ujjain was famous for mathematics and uh, astronomy. Then uh, we are just moving to uh, the evolution of higher learning and research in modern India. Already we talked about uh, the system, higher education system, the uh, basic uh, higher, uh, sorry, the higher education system in uh, ancient India that was mainly uh, Brahmanical or Vedic edu uh, education. So in coming to the uh, modern India, we can see a very, uh, so many uh, changes uh, in the higher education system and we can see a large evolution 
in the higher education system so uh, we are just going to this slide the main three basic agents of modern education in india were as follows the british government or east india company then british government and the east india company made so many things in education system in india christian missionaries the christian missionaries uh, were doing a, a very important a role in developing the higher education in india and indian intellectuals and reformers that was also very important thing like s radha krishnan aravind ghosh like uh, so many scholars in india in indian scholars uh, uh, took part very uh, in the evolution of higher education the modernization of the higher education system including the uh, we already uh, including the distribution of higher education to all of, all of the communities in india in ancient india we can uh, see that the uh, higher education uh, system is availed by the only upper caste uh, i mean the brahmanical class then in in modern india we can see the all all of the communities were uh, are uh, studying uh, and acquiring knowledge in various uh, fields like science humanities commerce and management so uh, the we can uh, go to the evolution of higher, higher learning higher education then first one is first point is warren hastings established the calcutta madrasa in 1781 for the teaching muslim law so uh, we have to from this slide we have to memorize the years okay we have to memorize memorize the years of the uh, some acts and uh, some establishment and all so the first one is the 1781 the calcutta madrasa was established in 1781 uh, in focusing the teaching muslim law so uh, in 1791 a sanskrit college was started in varanasi in banaras by jonathan dangan for the study of hindu philosophy and law system we can see there were uh, we can see the influence of religions in the modern uh, in the evolution of higher learning and research the first one is the 1781 in 1781 calcutta madrasa was established on the uh, idea of teaching muslim law in 1791 uh, there is a sanskrit college uh, teaching based on the hindu philosophy and law system so the third one is the charter act of 18 uh, 13 1813 was the first step towards education being made an objective of government so we the government is taking part a very important role in evaluate evolution of higher learning here in 1835 1835 we i we know that uh, the english east india company uh, was ruling india so under the law on william bendick uh, william bendick it was decided to introduce english as the medium of instruction macaulay in minutes referred to the, his proposal of education for the indians he wished to create a class of indian who were indian in color and blood but english in taste and affiliation we all know about this macaulay minutes Uh, we already learned this in our social science sciences classes in our pri, uh, in schools so in 1835 based on the macaulay minutes the lord william bendick decided to introduce english as a medium of instruction so we have to note that macaulay minutes was the inspiration and who took the decision the william bendick lord william bendick so in 1835 the elif elfinstan college mumbai and calcutta medical college were set and the university of of calcutta madras and mumbai was established in 1857 as the universities if there is a question about the universities which are the uh, which is the uh, among the following options which is the uh, first university uh, in india then Uh, if the uh, if the, there are uh, four options including bombay or uh, Cal uh, calcutta or madras then we have to choose one of these option okay so in 1857 1857 you know uh, the year 1857 is very famous for the first indian independence war okay so in the in the same year the calcutta madras and mumbai universities were established 
so the india the first universities of india are calcutta university madras university and mumbai university thus universities are re still running okay so uh, there were some commissions we have to learn about this there was hunter commission 1882 to uh, 83 to suggest a segregation of primary and higher education there was uh, there was not much uh, classification there was not much uh, the division between the uh, sections like primary secondary higher secondary so based on the hunter commission hunter commission suggested that the segregation of the primary and higher education we have to separate these educational institutions the system of the higher education education uh, to primary and higher higher education so in 1902 1902 universities commission was set up under sir thomas Rale raleya uh, to anchor into conditions and prospects of setting up the universities in india as a result indian universities act was passed in 1904 so we have to uh, for uh, i hope we are not wasting the time so uh, we i am very uh, going very fast so i just uh, mentioning the year and the what what is written in the uh, bold letters i'm just reading that only so uh, if you get the if you will get the uh, presentation the slides you can uh, learn all of the deep uh, things like uh, who uh, the in uh, who organized this who suggested and all so we have to just memorize these things in 1902 universities commission was set up uh, Indian Universities Act was passed in 1904. Uh, that is an important uh, thing. The Indian Universities Act was passed in uh, 1904. In 1905, the year of uh, Bengal Division, National Council of Education was set up. Okay, National Council, uh, Council of Education was set up by Sodeshi National Leaders in, and Jadapur University as a result of it. So, this is a very important uh, point. So, Jadapur University uh, is uh, was established as the result of National Council, uh, establishment of National Council of Education in 1905. So, we have to uh, relate uh, the National Council of Education with the Jadapur University. You know, Jadavpur University is a state university in Bengal, but ha has a very uh, nice facilities, very wonderful opportunities for the scholars and all. So, uh, in NIR of ranking, Jadavpur University is always uh, getting the highest ranks. So, the Jadavpur University established as a result of national establishment of National Council of Education. So, in 1917, Sadler Commission uh, and then uh, Sadler Commission uh, suggested the division of 10 plus 2 plus 3 system and setting of the Central Advisory Board of Education. I I remember uh, one of uh, from one of the uh, previous cycles of net exam, uh, the, there, be, there was a question about CABA. What was the uh, full form of CAB. CAB is the Central Advisory Board of Education. Please note that Hartog Committee. Hartog Committee was in 1929. For which purpose Hartog was oh, Har 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 uh, sorry Hartog Commission was established? You have to focus on quality and standards of education. Sapru Committee 1934. Abbott Wood Report 1937. Varda Scheme of Education 1937. So, Vartha scheme of education is very important because it is related to Mahatma Gandhi. Recommended by Nai Talim of basic education as a recommendation of Mahatma Gandhi. We all know about this Nai Talim system. Uh, the Gandhiji's uh, proposal about the uh, higher education system, Gandhiji said that there, there should be a vocational training and skill training as part of education and all. So, that is Nai Talim system and Vartha scheme of education. 1937 about Vardha we have to uh, remember one one more thing Vardha is very very famous for the university in the name of Mahatma Gandhi there is a university in the name of Mahatma Gandhi that is Mahatma Gandhi Andarashtra Hindi Vishwavidyale that is Mahatma Gandhi International Hindi University that is uh, established in the Vardha Vardha is in the state of Maharashtra so Surgeon report. There's there's a surgeon report in 1944. So uh, 
also known as this post war educational development so post war educational uh, development is related to surgeon report we can call uh, surgeon report so uh, then a uh, very very important thing i uh, so uh, this question uh, in from the uh, some question from this area very frequently so we have to uh, learn and understand the dates the uh, Uh, who proposed this uh, commission who what was the aim of this commission and all so we have to uh, remember these four commission as important as possible so radha krishna commission mudaliyar commission committee on emotional integration kothari commission uh, am, am i going very fast is that okay for you people uh, can can you just uh, text in the text box chat box is that okay okay uh, because i am very uh, going very fast because we have to cover uh, all of this portion and you have to revise all of these things you have from tomorrow you have the net exam so uh, we have to uh, we have we will uh, we can come back to the radha krishna commission radha krishna commission also known as the university education commission so university education commission is radha krishna commission that is uh, it was in the period of four, uh, 1948 to 49 suggested the integration of secondary education and higher education so radha krishna commission was directly uh, connected with the higher education the secondary education okay by setting up of ugc so if you uh, get a question about the ugc the establishment of ugc is related to which commission so the answer is radha krishnan commission so, so radha krishnan commission was uh, recommended the uh, setting of setup of the uh, establishment of ugc it's also recommended the setting of rural universities so in india we already said that there was only three universities in india calcutta madras and bombay so radha krishnan commission suggested to uh, uh, in establish uh, some rural universities also calcutta madras and uh, bombay was the cities of the main major cities of, of india so the students uh, from the rural areas uh were also wants to uh wanted to uh, study in uh, to uh, explore the higher education so radha krishna commission suggested to we have to establish some rural universities also so what is mudaliyar commission what is the period of mudaliyar commission 1952 to 53 so uh mudaliyar commission also popular as a second second education commission so radhakrishna commission is uh, related with the ugc the question will uh, come in that style so mudaliyar commission is uh, directly uh, connected to the higher edu uh, the secondary education it recommended introducing a three year secondary and four year higher education system so three year secondary and four year higher education system it also advocate the setting up of multi purpose schools and vocational training institute so this is also important so multi purpose schools and vocational training institute we know all uh, in the all over india i guess we have so many vocational uh, training institute i iti's industrial training institutes vocational higher secondary system and all so the mudaliyar commission uh, was the basic uh, inspiration uh, in setting up of all of this uh, educational multi purpose schools and vocational training institutes so uh, coming to committee on emotional integration uh, 1961 it was set up under the chairmanship of dr sambhurnan to study role of educational program for youth so what is the role of youth in higher education system that was the sambhurnan study committee the committee was committee on emotional integration 1961 and students in schools and colleges in particular in order to strengthen the process of emotional integration so the another one is kothari commission kothari commission is also very important so year of kothari commission is 1964 to 90, 1966 don't forget this years so we you, the question will be asked like uh, please make an order Uh, with these commissions radha krishna and mudaliyar commission uh, kothari commission we have to uh, make it order in chron chronologic chronological order and all so commission was uh, titled education and national development report so kothari commission 
is directly connected to education and national development report it is very progressive report it proposed a three year degree course and a four year honors degree course so what is the main thing uh, the three year degree course and four year honors degree course the before the nep uh, introduced in the india there were so many universities offering four year honors degree courses and uh, the three year degree courses so we know uh, in iflu itself uh, we we had three years three year degree ug courses and after the uh, nep after introducing nep uh, so many universities in india uh, offering are offering the four year honors degree courses okay so uh kothari commission was the first kothari was the first uh, person uh, who proposed the four uh, year honors degree course so national policy on education npe we know nep and all that the same thing national policy on education in some uh, uh, a special periods we have to modify we have to mold our education uh, system what what we have to change what we have to improve in which area we have to focus more and all so national policy on education npe was the may, may had an important role in learning uh, improving the qualities of higher education system kothari commission was followed the national policy of education in, of 1960 8 and 86 so 19 don't confused between uh, 1968 and 86 this emphasized on improving the quality of higher education system so npe uh, the first npe was in 1968 and the second npe national policy of education was 18 1986 so there is uh, uh, it is easy to remember right imparting uh, higher education system by distance learning mode so it is suggested the distance education also so uh, before that uh, the all universities were offering the uh, programs the courses in regular mode so then national policy of education suggested that from uh, for those people who are in uh, the home who are in the office they can also uh, participate in some courses so we have to offer distance learning mode so sam pitroda committee it was established in 2007 we came to the 2007 it is also popularly known as national knowledge commission who what is the full form of nkc we have to answer that uh, national Co knowledge commission is nkc nkc was established in 2007 okay then next point is national curriculum framework 2005 that is very important uh, national curriculum fra framework was proposed by ncert focused on learning without burden child centered approach curriculum should be focused on holistic approach so it is basically uh, oh, it is uh, national curriculum framework was a student friendly uh, framework it was a student friendly scheme by ncert then three languages formula what is three languages formula aim is to promote multilingualism and national harmony to uh, keep the national harmony in a great way uh, the three languages formula introduced in indian schools so if i am from kerala then i studied uh, in the state syllabus in the state syllabus of kerala i studied three languages malayalam english and hindi from the uh, people from karnataka they can uh, and they have to study kannada uh, english and hindi so all of the indian state uh, uh, schools have to, have to uh, teach the three languages uh, in the high school uh, till high schools that is the three languages formula the first language it will be the mother tongue of re or regional language from uh, a person who coming from telangana it will be telugu or urdu i guess then second language in india hindi speaking state it will be other modern indian languages or english in non hindi speaking state it will be hindi or english so uh, as for south india and all uh, the second language will be hindi and or oh, hindi or english okay in hindi speaking state it will be other modern indian languages or english uh, we have to Uh, hindi uh, the first language in hindi speaking state the first language is hindi itself so we have to teach we have to learn another modern language or 
any uh, Indian modern language or English. That is our policy. Then third language. What is third language? In Hindi speaking state, it will be English or any modern Indian language. In the non-Hindi speaking state, it will be English or modern Indian language. So for a person who uh, coming from UP or Bihar, that is in the, that uh, the UP and Bihar are Hindi speaking states. So as third language, they have to uh, learn a modern language like Bengali or any uh, any language Bengali, Tamil, Malayalam or any other Indian modern language. But the uh, in non-Hindi speaking state, it will be English or modern Indian language. So uh, we have to, in Kerala, we are studying Hindi as the third language. So I think the three language formula is still uh, under, um, under the success. I guess in Hindi speaking state, they are not, uh, I'm not sure uh, for the information. I think in Hindi speaking states, uh, they, they, they can, they, they are teaching Hindi and English as a, uh, a compulsory subject and uh, the third language formula is not uh, applying in all uh, institutions. Okay. So Yashpal committee in 2009, Yashpal committee in 2009 suggested scrapping all of higher education regulatory or monetary, monitoring bodies and creation of a super regulator, a seven member commission for higher education research. So Yespal committee said that all of the uh, education system is uh, it's not much sufficient uh, to improve our qualities. So uh, academic qualities. So we have to scrap all of things, uh, all of higher education system and we have to uh, then that is why they established they made a seven member commission on higher education and research that is CHER, CHER, that is the full form of CHER is Commission for Higher Education and Research. State Higher Education Councils would form the second tier of the system. So next one is New Education Policy 2020. NEP, we all know about NEP. There are so many uh, important things about NEP. There are so many, the Indian universities and higher education institutes are following the NEP uh, to improve the academic qualities. So which brings about several major reforms in education in India. Among the major reforms, the 10 plus 2 structure in schooling system has been replaced by 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 structure. It will be include 12 years of schooling and 3 years of Anganwadi and preschooling. So what is Anganwadi? The kindergarten thing. So that is uh, all the, uh, please remember this, please uh, note this thing, all of the uh, rules uh, suggested by all of the suggestions made by NEP is uh, not fully uh, succeeded or uh, fully uh, applied. Uh, in all of the universities, the uh, Indian universities and uh, institu academic institutions are trying to uh, uh, do apply the suggestions of a new education policy as much as possible. So this means, uh, so we have to understand, uh, we have to understand that these are the, these are just suggestions. So we have to uh acquire these things within the uh, time period okay this means the first five years of schools will comprise of the foundation stage including three years of primary school and classes one and class two so okay we covered uh some portions like uh, from some universities uh some ancient universities and ancient uh, institutions of learning so i will ask some questions so there are two questions uh, so you can can you answer to for these two questions there are options also so i think uh, we didn't mention some of this uh, points of this uh, mentioned in this question but if we if you study already if you learned already these things you can answer in the chat box then we will check the answers of you so a uh, you are saying that which of the following document is termed as a magna carta of Eng English education system? That is a very simple answer, right? So you are answering A is correct. Are you sure? So Macaulay minutes. Okay, okay. Yeah, you are saying Macaulay minutes. So we have to check. 
another name of basic education in uh, is or nai talim is nai what is the another name of nai talim i already uh, taught uh, you in this class itself what is nai talim what is the education plus uh, plan you are right so congratulations so answer i put the answers here the first one is a which of the following document is termed as the magna carta for of english education in india is answer a the not mccala minutes so we have to remember this and another name of basic education i talim is that is correct c so some of you answered uh, charles wood dispatch as the magna carta of english education please not that is the answer not b so the another question was the uh, what is the another name of nai talim nai talim what the education plus uh, plan so can you answer who suggested the what the education plan i already uh, told you in this class itself who suggested who proposed the what the education plan or nai talim can you answer yeah neha kumari uh, you are right dona maria thomas uh, asna tasneem okay you uh, already yeah mubashira thank you thank you so uh, so nai talim was proposed by gandhi ji was that was a simple question which commission recommended the induction of applied science technology and technology in the university course who introduced introduced this mudalia commission sadler commission hunter commission indian university commission which commission suggested these things which commission recommended the induction of applied science and science and technology basically science and technology who who suggested a you are saying a mudalia commission are you sure nebhan so what was the medium of education the second question is we will check uh, we ha we have to answer for the fourth question what was the medium of education in vedic period what was the medium what was the language of learning in uh, modern uh, sorry ancient vedic period the, there was uh, there is uh, uh, four options pali sanskrit prakrit and local dialect any local dialect so sanskrit is everybody is saying science so we have to check the answer yeah uh, the for the third question the answer of third question is sadler commission so sadler commission is uh, connected to uh, science and technology introducing induction of science and technology and mudile what what is mudiliar commission mudiliar commission is uh, connected to the secondary education system okay uh, sorry higher secondary system so what was the medium of education as you know the veda all vedas were in uh, sanskrit language so vedic system of education was in the sanskrit language itself so we can uh, move to the new education policy there are, there are so many points about the new education policy the mphil to be discontinued discontinuation of mphil music arts and uh, literature to be taught in all colleges by 2030 the first point is 2030 one large multi multidisciplinary college in every district so the thing the basic idea of introducing nep uh, 2020 it is skill based training so so all of this uh, studying the improvement the studying the evolution of higher education system the scholars and the famous uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, the scholars understood that the professors understood that that is not sufficient in the indian education system the skill uh, based training the life skills and all uh, other multidisciplinary approach was the very uh, lacking thing in the education system of india so we have to focus um, uh, more on these things so we uh, skill development and the multidisciplinary approach multidisciplinary if i study uh, a language a persian language or german language i have to i should uh, know about the other languages also i should uh, know the music i should know any other areas i have to specialize more than one uh, areas so in this uh, world of competition we have to overcome all of this competition we have to get the uh, quality of higher education system so uh, it is basically the new education policy is based on the skill multidisciplinary approach and multi uh, the skill development education skill development
education so m field is to, uh, to be discontinued sanskrit will be made so the the main thing is the uh, sanskrit language the promotion of sanskrit language is also part of nep so vocational skill to be taught i already uh, said that if we study a degree if we study a ug course we have to uh, learn a vocational or anything uh, we have to we have to be capable of doing some jobs so the basic idea of vocational skill training is that then no rigid separation between arts and science curriculum if i study the bsc chemistry or bsc physics i will uh, so i can uh, study uh, the another uh, subject from another area humanities if i study social science and all i can uh, choose some subjects from science also so multidisciplinary approach was there so in some universities including iflu uh, they are offering swayam courses in different areas the, we have there is some courses compulsory in your syllabus to uh, pass your uh, degree with the to get your certificate and all so that is the uh, part that is the as the result of the new education policy 2020 internship will be included from class 6 so uh, from class 6 itself if now all the universities are giving internship so offering internship or suggesting internship so uh, internship is the main thing uh, to develop our uh, educational uh, uh, so uh, the occupational qualities and all so these are the th uh, things by nep there are, there are so many things about the nep you can watch you can study you can learn from these slides i will share the slides later so regulatory framework of a higher education uh, higher education in india what are the what are the regu regulatory framework central government state government central advisory board of education these organizations these uh, establishments has the right to uh, there are the they are providing uh, they are establishing in some the universities and all so under the central government under the state government there we can see a lot of universities are in edu higher education so we have that the, these are the simple uh, simple things uh, as uh, easier as possible you can uh, uh, learn about these things okay apex level bodies what, what are the upper apex level of bodies there are right eight apex level bodies regulatory bodies research council under the department of higher education which are responsible for higher education in india so apex level bodies are regulatory bodies and research council so regulatory bodies there are three regulatory bodies university ugc uh, aicte AIC, ugc you all know about ugc university university grants commission what is uh, the full form of aicte all india council for technical education then another one is uh, council of architecture so these are the regular regulatory bodies so uh do you know uh, that's a funniest thing this the word university is derived from the latin word universitas universitas uh, is the the basic form of university the origin of university which means specialized association between students and teachers so universitas me means the specialized association between students and teacher okay uh, we can move to the central universities, state universities and private universities. As the PG students, I don't have to mention all of these deepest things, uh, all of these basic things about the uh, central universities, state universities and private universities. Basic things, uh, the, things are that there, there are 56 central universities under Hello. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Can you hear me? Uh, please okay 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 fine 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 so uh, we are just moving the uh, to the moving back to the slides if uh, if there is any uh, problem 
are occurring please um, please on the, your mic and please say okay so i am just focusing on the slides and i am not seeing the google meet here so uh, for the information i just said this when central universities and state universities private universities uh, so there are 56 central universities these are very basic facts about these universities uh, you have you have to read and all you have to note and revise it okay the dm to be universities are dmd to be a dmd to be university commonly known as the dmd university refers to a higher performing institution as declared by the central government so these are the uh, dmd universities meta universities uh, there was a question about meta university concept who uh, proposed the meta university concept which university uh, is uh, applied the meta, meta university concept basically uh, that is meta uh, delhi university so uh, these things are very easy you can just read and revise it so these are this is the list of a list of 56 central universities of india uh, almost all the state have their own central universities in tamil nadu there is a central university in tiruvar in uh, in telangana there are so many central universities if Lu, HCU, M, uh, Maulana Asa, National Urdu University is and all. Then uh, in Kerala, there is a central university in Central University of Kerala in Kasarkod. So there are so many. There are total, uh, please remember the number only. Then please uh, just read the names of these universities, the which, uh, for the example, this university, the Jadavpur University, uh, so Tezpur University is situated in which state? the uh, if they ask the what is the answer you can just uh, answer in the textbook there Tezpur university uh, is situated in which, which state can you answer yeah so when she Shyam is right Assam is a uh, state uh, that is uh, uh, Tezpur university is situated in so we can move to out of 56 central universities following 10 central universities are under the preview uh, purview of other ministries basically uh, the like hc uh, hyderabad central university pondicherry university and all they are uh, in the under the mhrd like ministry of education so these are some universities like nalanda university south asian university central agricultural university so they, they they these are the universities under different uh, ministries ministry of agriculture ministry of external affairs, uh, affairs and all ministry of agriculture ministry of aviation and all so please note these universities okay sample questions the university of Allahabad was founded in the year any of you uh, know the answer please uh, just put the uh, question number and answer in the chat uh, the option in the chat box the second one is which of the following this uh, is the regulator of higher education ncrt aict ugc msrd this is very easiest question uh, the government established the university grants commission by an act of parliament in this year so uh, which parliament act suggested the establish the university grants commission which year we have to remember that year these all questions are, were asked in the previous cycles of net exam okay which of the following university will be set up as the central university during 11th five-year plan indira gandhi national igntu hyderabad university patna university and ln nisra university so uh, did you answer in the chat uh, chat box yeah some of neha kumari 42 a are this 4 1948 please mention the question number also then there are four questions okay we can just directly check the answer the university of Allahabad founded in the uh, in the year of 1887 okay the that is a very one of the very uh, oldest central university uh, the ug is what the easiest question is ugc is regulator of the higher education so in 1956 the government established the university grants commission okay which of the following university will be set up as the central university during 11th five year plan indira gandhi national tribal university so indira gandhi igntu igntu is situated in the headquarters uh, the main campus is situated in the amar khandak in madhya pradesh 
so it is placed established based on based on the 11th five year plan of 2007 to 12 okay national assessment and accreditation council very important thing naac so uh, they ask the uh, the net exam uh, one of the net exam asks that what is the full form of NAC that is so simple national assessment and accreditation council so NAC is an autonomous body established in 1994 by UGC with the headquarters in Bangalore established the NPE so uh, NAC was established based on the suggestions of the NPE 19, uh, 1986 the prime the prime function of NA, uh, NAAC NAC is to assess the and accreditation of the institutions of higher learning so NAC will be providing this ranking and all. Uh, NAC will be providing some fund to universities and all. So that is a, uh, not uh, not fun. Uh, they basically the uh, function of the NAC is to accredit and assess the institution, the quality of institution, not funding. Okay, the funding is provided by UGC. Association of Indian Universities (AIU). What is the full form of AIU? Association of Indian Universities. The idea of why then there are some uh, points about association engine you know so you can uh, read and you revise later i just keep this slide universities grants commission according to the latest report the latest document uploaded in the ugc official website there are the please remember the name uh, number of this universities say it universities are 4, 460 in india deemed to be university deemed universities are 128 Central University is 56 and private university is 430. Indira Gandhi National Open University. Indira Gandhi National Open University is IGNOU. That is a completely uh, distance education university. You can do the uh, edu distance education through Indira Gandhi National Open University. So there is a uh, clarity about the IGNOU. Indira Gandhi National Open University is a central university. This is based on the uh, distance education, but it is also a central university. All India Council for Te uh, Technical Education (AICT). We mentioned about the AICT. Please remember that it was uh, uh, the year of establishment, 1945, and uh, as an advisory body. And is it is as the uh, council uh, they established in the 1987. So, approving about the technical institution, about the engineering colleges and all, the affiliation and approval is done by AICT. RUSA, Rashtriya Uchadar Shiksha Abhiyan, one, uh, one of the previous cycles of ex, uh, in the exam were uh, asked the full form of the uh, RUSA. So, Rashtriya Uchadar Shiksha Abhiyan is the full form of the RUSA. RUSA will be, uh, it's it aims at providing strategic funding to eligible state higher education institutions. So, state higher educational institution to, uh, is the main focus of the ROSA. Research Council. There are five research councils Indian ICSSR, Indian Council of Phys Philosophical ICPR. What is the full form of ICPR? Philosophical Research. Then PSISPC. So, Indian Science, Philosophy and Culture. ICHR. What is ICHR? Historical Research. NCRI National Council of Rural Institutes Hyderabad. So please remember the headquarters, the places of the uh, councils. The subordinate office offices under the Bureau of Language Education. There are some uh, points about the lang languages that is not much important, but you have to uh, cover this portion also. I just skip this slide. NIRF. What is NIRF? NIRF is very important uh, thing in the uh, in the, this syllabus nirf is national institutions of institution of ra institutional ranking framework the nirf is giving ranks to the university indian institutions and universities based on their qualities so uh, there in every there they upload they update the rankings of indian universities so for the latest rankings you can click the link and all for, uh, you can check it later. Uh, then key developments in value education. There are some points about the uh, value education and all. So you have to national curriculum framework, savants committee and all. You have to just read. These are the simple things.
so by 8:30 we are just uh, ending the portion of uh, the higher education system i know i moved very fast i covered all of these uh, portions as very fast so we are just mentioning the uh, some portions about the governance public polity polity, uh, polity and administration so there are just points constituent assembly there are some points uh, the the who are who is the the easiest question is the who is the uh, uh, who suggested who made the who is the father of Indian constitution father of Indian constitution is uh, Baba Sahab Ambedkar there are so many people behind the drafting of uh, constitutional assembly then who was the first president of uh, cons the constituent uh, drafting committee the Sachidanand Sinha was the uh, first uh, president of the drafting committee. Then you have to note all of these things. There are so many things though. So uh, please read it later. Preamble to the constitution. Just read the preamble to the constitution. Uh, there are some points uh, in board letters. Please uh, remember this. And Jawaharlal Nehru, the main thing is Jawaharlal the first a president a prime minister of india jawaharlal nehru uh, prepared the preamble of the constitution we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens so there are four main points in about the preamble of it, the uh, constitution justice liberty equality and fraternity okay so these, these are the main keys of the uh, constitution. So through, through the 42nd amendment in 1976, the word secular and socialist were added to constitution. So secular and socialist, these words are added to uh, Indian constitution in 1976. So fundamental rights, all of you know about the fundamental rights. So part three of the constitution is rightly described as the Magna Carta of India. There is a probability of coming question as who what is magna carta of india that is part three of constitution so these are some points about the part three then fundamental rights how many fundamental rights we have the right to equality right to freedom right against exploitation right to freedom of religion cultural and educational rights right to constitutional remedies so these are the uh, as you know uh, the, there are six uh, fundamental rights we have to cover this uh, please uh, please uh, not this this all portions are very easy but don't skip these points because uh, you can score very easily from these portions okay then there are fundamental how many duties we have uh, fundamental rights we have the six fundamental rights we have then how many fundamental duties we have it is 11 duties so 1 to 11 please remember all of the these duties to uh, have an integrated national integrated a uh, country uh, peaceful country uh, to maintain the peaceful atmosphere of this country we have to uh, obey the fundamental duties and then we can avail the uh, fundamental rights in india okay so schedules in the constitution of india first said it, there are seven schedules in india the seven schedule the all seven uh, the seven schedules are dealing with different uh, things first schedule is about list of states and union territories second schedules are the salaries of president and all third schedule forms oaths and affirmations fourth schedule allocation of seed for each state in india and uh, of india in rajya sabha seats six the fifth is about administration and control of scheduled areas uh, areas and tribes sixth schedule uh, administration of tribal areas in assam meghalaya tripura mizoram and arunachal pradesh the seventh schedule is gives allocation of powers of function between union and state so uh, as fast i covered this uh, portion also then we can just see uh, the some model questions here i know uh, yeah this is 
yeah these are the um, uh, basic questions the answer is also already uh, uh, given here so just read the question and understand okay then there are so many you can take it as a homework so uh, at fi or finally we are saying a goodbye and by i think you enjoyed uh, this class and the series of uh, classes including mine i taught you uh, environment people development and environment and the higher education system and i hope you all of you uh, people all, all people of you will be very benefited with this class can you uh, tell some uh, can you share some feedback about this uh, class and all but before that if they, if there is any clarity needed in this class the portion of higher education uh, system and the public administration if you have any doubt any clarification needed i will solve that first and we will get the feedback and all so if there is any uh, if there is no doubt at all so uh, we can uh, just wind up before winding up i have to uh, get some feedback about the uh, my class and uh, my classes and all, uh, all other classes also so what about uh, is the program by embark benefited you that is a basic question uh, yeah yeah there, there is a free uh, msfe flu uh, post the link about the feedback and all so you can uh, Put the your put your feedback and suggestions in the uh, Google form. So I think I hope there is no uh, much uh, questions about these portions. So uh, I wish you all the very best. So uh, in the next series of embark, you have to take in classes as the qualified JRF candidate as the JRF qualified uh, faculties for all the very best for the uh, that. From tomorrow, you have the exam. So, a prayer for you, uh, people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, sir. In the absence of questions, let's wrap up the session. I would like to take this opportunity to appreciate the enlightening session delivered by our faculty master Shabab, and I appreciate each and every one of you for gracing this session with your presence. Thank you.